Because running incorporates the same movement and pattern over and over again, variability is a term that often refers to moving in different ways or really allowing your body to encounter different forces, different ranges of motion outside of the normal demands of running. So from an injury risk standpoint, if we can add some variability to your program, whether that's wearing multiple pairs of shoes, strength training, moving in different directions, uh, playing tennis or other sports throughout your week to not always be going through that same movement pattern, this can have a very protective effect for our body when it comes to reducing the overall risk of injury. So in this video, what I wanna do is cover three specific areas and teach you how to incorporate more variability within those areas. This will include range of motion and mobility, strength training, and also plyometrics. Stay tuned as I walk you through these. In terms of mobility, there are three specific drills that I want to introduce here to you today. First one is what's called adductor rocking. So because we're always moving forward and back throughout the sagittal plane, um, we, we rarely move side to side as runners. So just making sure we're preserving overall mobility and range of motion in that frontal plane is very important. First thing here, if we show that adductor rocking drill, Straight leg first, because we have a straight leg, straight leg and a bent leg version. If I'm going straight leg out to the side, I'm walking my hands to align with the center of the body, and then I'm just rocking forward and backward into the hip. So now we're, we're starting to place a little bit of stretch or tension on this adductor muscle group or the muscles of the groin, and we're sitting back into that position. Okay, doing something like that side to side, noticing if there's any differences on one side versus the other side, and then we can go simply into the bent leg. So almost like this frog position, both knees are out to the side. I'm here on my hands, and I'm just rocking the butt back, sitting back to the heel. So you can see this is the same rocking motion I would do with the bent leg or the straight leg adductor rocking. A typical area a lot of runners tend to get tight and weak is these adductor muscles. So making sure we're preserving range of motion and overall mobility at the hip into this position. I could also, if I have better, and not for me, but for other people to go down to the forearms. If you have slightly better mobility and you're able to get lower, going down to the forearms could be a good uh, again, progression of that movement. Next thing I would recommend, and I think a lot of, a lot of runners are actually doing a good job in their dynamic warm-up introducing or using this exercise or drill, is just a, uh, a leg swing across and up. So we can think of running, everything is happening in that position. But if we actually stand here, hold on to a tree, hold on to a wall, and we incorporate that leg swing motion across and up, it's, I mean, help, it's helpful in a couple ways. One, if we look from the bottom up, our foot, we're starting to really work into some of those uh, uh, smaller muscles and joints of the foot and the ankle, subtalar joint, um, some of these areas between the uh, tarsal bones and metatarsals, which typically get a little bit tight and bound up from always moving forward. So we're, mo we're improving mobility throughout the foot. And then we're introducing a little bit of tibial, you can see my knee, tibial internal external rotation, which is important happening down here at the lower leg, hip internal external rotation, and then also that bigger range of motion through that opposite side hip. So it moves us into some different ranges of motion that we don't normally are can encounter while running, but we need to do a good job while running to stabilize against some of these. So it's just a slightly different thought process to help us move in a different, different way. Next thing is a, a bigger overall movement pattern, but we're looking at the forward lunge, the lateral lunge, and the transverse lunge. Some people call it the lunge matrix or the triplanar lunge because there are three lunges. You can add different lunges into this to really encounter more ranges of motion, but something as simple as I'm not really thinking strength on this. I'm thinking about mobility and moving through that range of motion, okay? We're going forward, we're going laterally, sinking down, turning, twisting, rotating. Again, opening up, adductors, rotating, rotating the spine and the shoulders. Those are a couple different ways to incorporate more variability from a mobility standpoint in your strength training program, dynamic warm up, whatever it is. Um, and that in this next video, what we're gonna do is show you specific strength training exercises to help build strength, introduce different loads and loading patterns onto the muscles to hopefully keep you healthy long-term. Now that was how to incorporate different range of motion or mobility drills to add more variability within your program. Now we're gonna look at strength spe specifically. Obviously we still wanna be doing our normal sagittal plane movements, your squats, 
your forward lunges, reverse lunges, split squats, step ups. Those are kind of the key movements for runners. But these next few I'm gonna introduce here are ways to move in different planes of motion to just to incorporate different loads, uh, ranges of motion on the tissues. So what we're gonna look at here, and obviously it depends on what your starting point is. Uh, I would recommend if our goal is to build strength in these ranges to hold a dumbbell in some way to load them up, but depends on your history with strength training, okay? But just to introduce the exercises first, we're gonna go into a lateral squat and a lateral lunge because there's a progression here. So like you saw a second ago, these were our mobility drills as well to work on range of motion and moving in different planes of motion. But now we're gonna load those up. So you can see here there's a line on the floor. My toes are on the line. I'm gonna just put one foot forward. I'm gonna slightly turn my toes out and I'm gonna shift back into the hip of that forward leg. So from here, butt back, knees out, dropping low and coming up. So obviously a slightly different range of motion that you're going to encounter while running, but working on eccentrically controlling through the adductors, driving up through these abductors and glutes as we come there, and then working on posture and overall postural stability through the upper half of the body. If we were going to load that up to make that a little bit harder to build strength, I can hold the single dumbbell down here and then go through that movement, get as heavy as I need to to make this challenging, usually anywhere from eight to 12 repetitions per side and doing multiple sets, or I can go up and hold the goblet position a little bit higher with that resistance up here to the chest and easier to sit back because it's a slight counterbalance. So it might help you with overall mobility, but tends to be a little bit harder to load the body. Okay, once I get that one down, I can, I can progress to the lateral lunge. So holding the dumbbell in the same exact way, I'm actually going to step in the same position so that offset foot position. So using a line on the floor can be very, very helpful with this. Because I have a single dumbbell, I'm gonna put that in my back arm and then I'm gonna step sink, drive. So I'm using these muscles to absorb force a little bit more, eccentrically load, and then drive me back up and over. So a little bit more force required to come back up into that position, okay? So that's a couple different ways where we can move laterally to build strength, whether we're in the single dumbbell, again, one dumbbell here or one dumbbell here in the goblet position. Then from there, what we can do is that actually that same transverse lunge. We can do that as a transverse squat or a transverse lunge, standing in the position stationary or stepping into it. So with this one, just because the position here is a little bit different and a little bit harder sometimes to hold the dumbbell down here and to think about that because it pulls the body down. So I like to do this one more specifically in the goblet position. So if we go one toe forward, this other one is kind of out to the side turned and rotate. I don't want to step straight back to the wall. That's a, a range of motion that's really hard to get into for most people, but just slightly sitting back, again, slightly rotating back towards that wall without going too far. And then from here, you can see the position of my body. I'm kind of somewhere set up somewhere in the middle. I'm just going to lunge, turn, rotate, push away and come back. So my front leg is staying pretty straight throughout this and my back leg is going from straight to bent but I'm always respecting the alignment of the leg here. Knee is lining up with that second toe as I turn and rotate around. Works on a really good range of motion, opening up the hips, spine, as we move into a different plane of motion. Then from there, we can do transverse lunge. Same exact thing, but I'm gonna step into that position a little bit harder. You need to make sure you don't overstep. You have good stability and balance. So you can see now I'm going through this rotational range of motion at the hips and the spine, placing a slightly different demand on the muscles and joints here. But those are simple strength training strategies to add more variability to your program. We can do it from a mobility standpoint, from a strength standpoint. And this next video, we'll look at basic plyometrics. Plyometrics is an other way to really address variability within your program, regardless of where you are, if you're getting higher within your mileage, you're in the off season, um, but really protective to help potentially reduce your risk of injury. So two drills I wanna look at here today. First one is medial to lateral jumps, and then we'll do the single leg four square with stick. So on this, both of these, we're, we're working on actually stabilizing and controlling our landing, but instead of going forward as we do with running, we're gonna go side to side or in a multi-directional pattern. So medial to lateral jumps, again, sometimes good to put the hands on the hips depending on um, how well you do with this movement, really monitoring the position of the pelvis. We don't want the pelvis to be tipping or dropping a lot, but we're but staying level straight across. And all we're gonna do from here is side to side. You can see a little bit harder 
land stabilize. As I land and strike the ground, I want to bend into that ankle, knee, and hip. But you can see that push off motion, pushing off to the side, something you won't commonly see in running. And then as I come down and strike the ground, I'm landing and then I'm centering over. So from a stability standpoint, I really need to control all of this. Okay, so a little bit different motion and force going through these muscles of the foot, low, lower leg, knee, hip, and even all the way up through the pelvis. Okay, add a slightly different demand on the chain, works on balance, stability, and shock absorption. But you can see how that's a little bit different than normal demands of running, but still helps tie together with the overall purpose of improving strength, stability, and control. Next one is a multi-directional single leg uh, four square hop. Um, obviously I don't have anything on the floor here, but if you just imagine kind of this, uh, this cross or this plus on the floor, and I have four different squares, all I'm gonna simply do is jump around this, but absorb and control each landing. So it doesn't have to be anything too big. We have that lateral, we have that forward, we have that lateral to medial, and then we have that anterior to posterior, or forward to backward. And we're just gonna go through each one. Once we get back around, we can reverse. But every time I strike the ground, I wanna give myself a second or two. I wanna bend into the ankle, knee, and hip, absorb four, stabilize first, and then go on to that next jump. Because that's the same thing we're going to do from side to side. You can see I'm not doing anything crazy in terms of height or intensity. I'm just adding different planes of motion. And also if I wanted to go diagonal, again, there's so many different ways you can play with this one to make it more multi-directional, but really encompass that variability component. Okay, runners, there you have it. Those are a series of drills that help really add more variability within your program, whether it's starting with some basic mobility and range of motion exercises, adding those specific strength training ones within your strength training program, or these low level plyometrics. Any of those can have a strong impact on you as from a protective standpoint to reduce your overall risk of injury. So rather than doing the same motion day in and day out, add some of these other components, move in different ranges of motion, and really treat your body well to withstand just the, the rigors and the demands of running long-term. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and I hope you enjoyed this video today.